Thanks to countless boring pictures and still models of cells like the one behind me, a lot of people have a very static image of a cell. But cells are actually highly variable. There are lots of different types of cells. There are different sizes of cells. They have different components and different functions. And cells are very dynamic. They change, they move, they carry out all the functions of life. In this unit, we're going to learn a lot more about cells and all the cool things they do. On the screen right now, you can see a few different examples of cells. We have some cuboidal epithelial cells from the kidneys, some striated muscle cells, a neuron with all of its cool extensions to reach out to other cells, blood cells that we carry oxygen around the body and fight infection, and adipose cells that store triglycerides for energy use later. All of these cells have the same basic components. All of these cells have a plasma membrane, they all have a nucleus, and they all have cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contains the liquid or gel part of the cell, which is the cytosol, and also all of the organelles that help the cell carry out the different functions. We're going to start by focusing on the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane has three important functions. First and foremost, it contains the cell and separates it from the environment. That's what lets the cell maintain an environment inside that's different from its surroundings. Second, the plasma membrane is really important for interacting with other cells and with the environment. This is what allows the cells to connect and work together. Finally, the plasma membrane is important because it regulates what gets in and out of the cell. That's important to let nutrients in, but to keep toxins out or to move wastes out. Let's take a closer look at the structure of the plasma membrane that allows it to carry out these functions. As we learned when we were talking about lipids, the main component of the membrane is phospholipids. The phospholipid bilayer, two layers of phospholipids with their polar head groups facing out and their nonpolar fatty acid tails facing in. But that's not all we have in a membrane. We describe membranes using the fluid mosaic model. The mosaic part means that the plasma membrane is made up of a lot of molecules. We do have a lot of phospholipids, but we also have a lot of other things that are part of the plasma membrane. We have cholesterol, shown here in yellow. We have proteins, shown in blue. We have some sorts of proteins that have carbohydrates attached. Those are called glycoproteins or sugar proteins. And we have some lipids that have carbohydrates attached, and we call those glycolipids. One of the important things about this particular structure of the plasma membrane, having all these individual molecules that work together to make up the membrane, is that the plasma membrane is fluid. That means that it's flexible. The membrane can change shape and individual molecules can move around within the membrane. They're not all tethered down, so molecules can move around each other. The cholesterol, as well as the unsaturated fatty acids of the phospholipids, are what keep things from packing too tightly together and maintain the fluidity of the membrane. The second function of the plasma membrane was to interact with the environment. All the molecules that are here on the outside surface of the membrane are contacting the environment around the cell. One of the structures we have on the outside of the membrane is called the glycocalyx. The glycocalyx is sort of a fuzzy layer of carbohydrates attached to the surface of the cell. From this model of the plasma membrane, you can see a number of the carbohydrate chains that are attached to the phospholipids and to the proteins that make up the glycocalyx. The glycocalyx is important because it provides a layer of protection for the cell. It helps the cell to adhere to things around it. And these carbohydrates play a role in cell identification that we'll talk about a little bit more later. The other part of the plasma membrane that interacts with the environment are the proteins. There are lots of different types of proteins that are found in the plasma membrane, and I'm going to talk about just a few of the different types. One of the important types of proteins we have in the membrane is a receptor protein. A receptor protein binds to some sort of a signal on the outside of the cell, and that causes a change to occur inside the cell. As an example, insulin outside of a cell binds to the insulin receptor in the plasma membrane, and that causes changes inside the cell that cause the cell to take in and use more glucose. The second type of membrane protein is a membrane-bound enzyme. 
Rather than going all the way through the membrane, these enzymes usually sit attached to the surface of the cell, but don't go all the way through. And these catalyze reactions right at the surface of the cell. An example would be the enzyme sucrase, which breaks down sucrose into glucose and fructose. Sucrase stays on the surface of the cells in the intestines, and it breaks down sucrose so the individual monosaccharides can be absorbed. Another protein type we find in the plasma membrane are cell identity markers. These are often glycoproteins, those proteins that have carbohydrate chains attached. And the cell identity markers help identify the type of cell. This is important to allow cells to be able to recognize cells that belong and to identify cells that don't belong. This is important to allow your body to fight off parasites or bacteria or other dangerous things that can get into the body and don't belong there. Since they don't have the correct cell identity markers, the immune system knows to attack and destroy them. An example of a specific type of cell identity marker would be the HLA complex. HLA complex proteins are unique to each individual, unless you have an identical twin. Everybody has different HLA proteins. These allow your cells to determine which cells actually belong to you. Most of the time, that's great but it can make things like transplants difficult. Plasma membranes also contain cell adhesion proteins. The plasma membrane also contains cell adhesion molecules. These cell adhesion molecules are what allow a cell to connect to other cells or to its surrounding environment. This is what makes it possible for us to go from, from being single cell organism to being multicellular, the ability for cells to connect to each other. The way cell adhesion molecules work is that the outside of the cell adhesion molecule connects to another cell or some structure in the environment, and the inside of the cell adhesion molecule connects to the cytoskeleton of the cell. That's what gives you a strong connection and helps really hold the cells together. One example of a cell adhesion molecule complex is dystrophin. Dystrophin helps to connect muscle cells to the surrounding structures. If dystrophin is unable to connect the muscles to the surrounding structures, the result is muscular dystrophy, weak muscle contraction because the muscles can't attach well to the bones so that they can move them. The last type of membrane protein that we're going to talk about are the transport proteins. Transport proteins are necessary to allow molecules to get in and out of the cell. We want to have the membrane to keep the cell separated from its environment, but we still need things to be able to get in and out and that requires transport proteins. For example, a glucose transporter allows glucose to get into the cell to provide energy.